So in that storm situation, get up in the middle of the night, feeling like the whole house is blowing, found ourselves without power. We can't have that. We got all our food relying on that. We're on wells, so we gotta run pumps. We need electricity. Not only that, heating is done with electricity. And there ain't nothing from the grid. So what do you do? Wire something together here with a 110 volt source. Um, I powered both sides of this panel so that um, you know every outlet has 110 volts. Every outlet that uh, is powering lights, refrigerators, um, anything that is 110 volts works. Um, you have to be very careful to turn off all of your 220 volt breakers. Turn off all your double pole breakers. Uh, this right here goes down to the main power panel. This is a sub panel, but you turn off all your 220 volt double pole breakers. That will complete the circuit. Um, you also have to turn off your main. So this is the main that's got the big wires that come straight from the meter. Yeehaw. So make sure that's off. Um, and then what I do is I, from the extension cord, I'll take the uh, the neutral and the ground, which would be the green and white wire here. Yep, pointing my finger in there. I'm aware of the danger. Um, wire both of those to the ground bar because those are both essentially the same thing. Wow, redundancy. Look at that. So in the black wires, you're hot. So I have that going to one breaker here in the garage, and then I have a little dummy. Yes, I know that's live. Go on to this other one here. What that does is, as you can see on the bus bar, we get one phase, and then we've got another opposite phase here that come down underneath the breaker here, down to two bars. Those are your bus bars, you can see. And you can see that they alternate, the little probes that come out. So if you backfed into one, it would only get one bus bar. But by jumping it over, it gets the other bus bar. So that way both bus bars are live with 110, 120 volts, whatever you've got available. Um, and then you also backfeeding them through a breaker allows uh, at least some circuit protection on the house end but then basically keeps everything wired in the house as it would be normally. Um, as of right now, I'm running on some extension cords and I'm probably pulling a little bit more than I should, about 1200 watts, it's not too bad. Uh, 11 amps, I'm staying at 60 hertz, but I'm also pulling this out of my other house. Uh, the backstory here is that my mother is in the hospital right now and she has her own meter, which the power went out because uh, it didn't have auto pay set up on the bill, and she's paperless, so we didn't see any bills come through. So to save her groceries as well as have power here in my workshop, I had to uh, rig something together until we were able to get that the power turned on, which is a three-day situation from the power company. Um, but I've done this uh, same method using a 110-volt inverter. Um, inside of my bus, um, I since don't have to do that on the main house. I have a generator wired into the main house since the last uh, four-day power outage. Uh, but I don't have leads over to this side yet to uh, energize this whole panel with disconnects and everything. So if you find yourself in a pinch after a hurricane, power company uh, shuts off the power because of a wildfire or something like this, um, you know, this is one approach. This may be a little safer than uh, backfeeding through an outlet. But anyway, shared for information. See how, uh, how we get out of a pinch. All right, have a good one, guys. Best way I've found in a pinch to uh, get power to all the outlets, uh, as well as all your lights to keep everything moving. Uh, if you know a better way of doing it, uh, or you want to point out... Uh, how stupid I am, etc., and how dangerous it is. I'd love to talk about it in the comments. So feel free to drop a line down there. Um, 